Were they good last year? Well, of course. I mean, anytime you can win 10 games, that's a pretty good season. And Georgia, under Mark Ricks, had a good year. 10-3, including a decisive bowl win over Louisville. Still, though, with all that talent that Georgia had last year and what they've had in the past, you get the feeling that some things were missing from Georgia's 2014 season. And we're not just talking about Todd Gurley, they're all everything running back, who missed you know an extensive period of time on two different occasions. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But what might have made Georgia's season seem incomplete was the fact that their three biggest rivals last season, South Carolina, Florida, and Georgia Tech, all beat Georgia. Now, the Georgia Tech game, I'll give Georgia a pass on that because Georgia Tech was hot at that time and ended up winning a major bowl game and winning 11 games overall. But how did Georgia lose to South Carolina, a team who just got walloped, you know, just the game before uh, by Texas A&M at home, and, of course, the Florida game in which the Gators won decisively in both South Carolina and Florida had mediocre seasons. Now, the thing that Georgia has to do this year is really get a passing game established, and they must be able to do a better job against the run. But let's talk about the good for the Bulldogs. There's a lot of good. Again, another uh, strong recruiting class from Mark Richt, bringing a lot of four- and five-star talent from the Georgia and Florida areas. Um, but they do have to replace the quarterback. But let's first of all talk about the ground game. Remember Todd Gurley, who, of course, now is in the NFL. Last season got suspended and also, too, at another stint, got hurt. So you would normally think losing an All-American guy like Todd Gurley would deplete your team, especially in the ground department. Not the case because Nick Chubb stepped in and was big time for UGA. Matter of fact, Chubb, you know, looked just as good as Gurley. How about this? 1,500 yards rushing and 7.1 yards per carry. Now, that's lightning right there when you can get 7 yards every time you carry the ball. And, by the way, I mentioned that he had 14 TDs as well. Nick Chubb is going to be a Heisman Trophy candidate to start this season. Also, you'll have um, Sonny Michelle. Didn't really see him during spring ball because of a shoulder injury, but Chubb and Mitchell are both sophomores. And if Keith Marshall can stay healthy, he's had some health issues in the past, then Georgia's ground attack is going to be extremely solid. And it doesn't hurt to have four offensive linemen return for the Bulldogs. A combined 80 starts for this veteran group, including uh, Colton Houston, you know, him at right guard, right tackle spot with Greg Piles, who last season was a second team all SEC player. He did that as a freshman. Left tackle, you'll have uh, John Theus, and left guard, it's uh, Brandon um, Clubano. So, Lots of experience up front, but you have Isaiah Wynn, who now steps into that center position, replaces the guy who started so many games at center, that's David Andrews. But really, as far as the down lineman, uh, that's the only guy you got to replace is the center. As far as the quarterback goes, I'm recording this show on August the 30th, and I still have not heard a starter yet for the Bulldogs as far as signal caller. Initially, people thought it was going to be a uh, two-way battle between Bryce Ramsey, who only threw 39 times a year ago. Remember, you know they had to replace Hunter Mason and um, you know um, Fatone uh, Balta. Okay, that thought it'd be between Balta and Ramsey. Well, last time I heard, you know Ramsey's still in the running, but you know Balta, you know, has kind of lost a little ground. But there's another guy into the mix, and that's former Virginia quarterback Grayson Lambert. Grayson Lambert, um, right now, it, it, it's really a toss-up because both Lambert and Ramsey have been working with the uh, number one squad, and uh, you know, Bouts, the last time I heard, was working with the number two offense. So we got to find out something soon because the season opener is in less than a week. Wide receiver area will be my biggest offensive concern for the Bulldogs. You know, Malcolm Mitchell, he's had a history of injuries. He's been there since 2011. In fact, I think he even missed a year because he was hurt. This is his final year, and he's going to be the number one guy for Georgia. We know this because he's the only leading returning receiver for the Bulldogs that had at least double digits in catches. Okay, we're talking about 10 catches, at least 10. And last year he had 31. The next leading receiver doesn't even crack the middle Um, doesn't even crack the uh, two-digit category as far as receiving. Biggest concern right now, besides not that much experience at receiving, the health of the receivers. And Isaiah McKenzie looked good in the spring, but also got hurt in the spring. The hamstring's been a lingering issue for uh, McKenzie, and he has seen very little action in August so far. I believe he'll play. I believe he'll be impactful. The question is, how soon will he play? Probably won't need him the first two games because you should be able to win them, and we'll explain the schedule in a little bit. But starting game three, when you get South Carolina, 
that's when you're going to need to be um, at your best, including the receiving department, because defenses are going to load seven or eight up and try to stop that run until you have weapons that can prove themselves. And you know, Georgia's got the talent at receiving, but at the present time, we just don't know um, if they can prove themselves in a rapid period of time. You know, Kenny Towns, as well as Jordan Davis, saw some action in the springtime. We'll see them um, become more involved. Looking at the defense, and last season, pass defense was excellent for the Bulldogs. He returned almost everybody from a D that was fifth in the country in pass D. One of the biggest reasons why they're going to be favored to win the SEC East. Talking about Quincy, um, you know, Malger, you know, Quincy Malger, this guy last season, four interceptions. He is a hard hitter, has been since day one. You have him at free safety, complimenting him, his partner in crime, Dominic Sanders, three picks a year ago. At the cornerback position, you have Devin Bauman and also the other corner occupied by Aaron Davis, who had 33 tackles. No problem at all for Georgia as far as the secondary. They, will, they'll, they should really dictate the pace again for a defense that was, by the way, um, plus 16 in turnover margin, okay, because of those picks, largely. Fourth in the country in that department. Linebackers, you return a couple in Jordan Jenkins as well as Leonard Floyd. Now, that's the good news. You know, we saw last season with Jenkins, you know, he had several sacks, 51 tackles, and uh, Floyd, six sacks and 38 tackles. Bad news is you lose terrific talent amongst that front seven in Ray McWilson and Amarlo Herrera. Both now have moved on. But what helps you as far as additions to this team, and he'll play right away at the world linebacker, that is Jake um, Gaines from Alabama, Birmingham. Of course, that football program defunct. And he had 58 tackles for the Blazers a year ago. So Georgia looks like they've solidified that spot at Will Linebacker. Defensive line, that's the weakness right now for the Bulldogs. They were middle of the pack team country um, speaking, 63rd in the country out of 128 teams when it came to stopping the run. They were very vulnerable in that area. And the only guy you had back amongst that front four with major experience is Sterling Bailey. Expect this defense to play a lot of younger talent. Talking about some true freshmen, perhaps, and Trent Thompson up front, and the guy that they're really, really high on, Joseph Ledbetter, who enrolled early so that he could play in the spring. He'll occupy defensive end at 6'4", 265. Future looks bright for this guy. Don't expect him to redshirt. And then nose tackle, um, you have a John Atkins and Josh Dawson. Now, Dawson's an interesting story. Him and James LaRoche, who should get some playing time up front, they used to be linebackers. So now they've been converted to the front. So biggest thing for Georgia, if they want to be a college football playoff contender, they got to do a better job in stopping the run. Special teams look pretty good as far as place kicking and punting. Um, Marshall Morgan only missed two kicks last year out of 23. He's a dandy. And the place kicker, Colin Barber, 39 yards per punt. That's not impressive, but what is impressive, he had 11 punts that was pinned inside the Bulldog or the opposition's 20-yard line. So uh, punt placement really was good for this guy. Again, both seniors, and you have them returning. The schedule for the Bulldogs, first two games should be wins. Uh, they better be wins if you're going to have a terrific season. You know, Louisiana Monroe and the SEC opener at Vanderbilt. So that should be 2-0. and And you host South Carolina, who beat Georgia a year ago. But this time, South Carolina has to come between the hedges. And then you play Southern in late um, September. Early October, how about this? Alabama Crimson Tide coming to Athens. One of the big games of the year in college football be interesting to see if these teams play in the SEC title game in Atlanta. So it could be the first of two matchups. You never know. Then the next week, got to get ready for Tennessee, who will be much better than last year, a lot more experience, and that game's in Knoxville. So Georgia's got back-to-back tough ones. And then the next week, defending SEC East champions, Missouri. But you get them at home. And, of course, the bye week before you play Florida, who walloped Georgia a year ago, cocktail party in Jacksonville. And look at mid-November. You have the Auburn Tigers. And, of course, we know what happened uh, the last time these two teams played at Auburn at Jordan-Hare. The Hail Mary, the Miracle, and um, Auburn. Of course, that was a magical year for them winning the SEC. Of course, Georgia Tech, got to watch out for the Ramblin' Wreck. They're going to be good, too, with a ter- terrific rushing attack. Right now, it didn't look like a good matchup for the Bulldogs. So we'll see how that develops in Atlanta this time. Georgia is going to have plenty of talent. Of course, her secondary is darn good. One of the best running backs in the country and an experienced offensive line. And I like the linebackers as well. The front four, for the time being, looks like a concern. 
and also too, receiver wise, they need quality receivers to prove themselves. If they can get this, if they can get this taken care of as the season progresses, Georgia is going to be a factor as far as being one of those four teams in the college football playoff. Yeah, if they were in the West Division, I wouldn't pick them to win it, but they're in the East, so I think that's a little bit more favorable. They gotta get past Tennessee. Of course, that's the game of the year in the division. And I see them in a close game because it's always close between those two teams. I see Georgia edging out Tennessee in Knoxville. And I see the Bulldogs with an 11-1 season. I do think they'll get beat somewhere in SEC play, but I do think they'll be in the SEC championship game. Find out September 2nd who I have picked from the SEC to go to the college football playoff. My prediction show for the college football playoff is Wednesday, September 2nd. Thanks for watching.